Um, what do you think about this uh, conference? What is its contribution? What is its vision? So, as you know, the Catholic Church is actu actually celebrating 50 years of the Second Vatican Council. Yes. So, it seems to me a coincidence, very interesting, that we remember our own council and its reception, and you are going to prepare a council. Yes. So, and in fact, for me, it is not so much an inter confessional event, but it is an ecclesial event, uh, uh, event. because uh, always when a church is preparing or receiving a, a council, it is a way to, to become more and better and for our own um, time, yeah. the Church of Christ. So in this sense, I... <laughs> I, am, I, I try to be attentive to what the sister churches of the Catholic churches right. are discussing actually yes. in order to learn about my own uh, tradition and maybe to have another look on my own tradition. So as we are in this house, I know that Sergei Bulgakov <laughs> lived on the second floor and I can really? confess here that the theology of Sergei Bulgakov changed my whole perspective on Catholic tradition, yeah. so on Catholic theology. So, and uh, as I have this experience, I try to continue. And as there are enough Catholics who only treat Catholic subjects, yeah. I think somebody, at least of Catholics, Catholic theology, they can go beyond a little bit and yes. look what others do and bring it back to our yeah. Catholic world. What would you, with your uh, great experience of and studying the circumstances of the Vatican II, uh, do we have to do in order to, to have this conference, take, uh, council take place? Absolutely. So, and in this sense, sometimes also when I talk with the rector, we say maybe it is, maybe it is a, uh, a way of wisdom to do, to prepare your council in another way uh, as we did. Because right. we, and it is easy in the Catholic tradition, you say the Pope calls the bishops, the bishops yeah. come and the council starts. Yeah. So, but you see that 50 years after the Second Vatican Council, we still have the question how to receive it. We have different interpretations. We did not realize everything what was said. So the process of reception is very long and very, very painful. So Indeed. maybe you have the painful process oh, before starting the preparation program. and then <laughs> when you will have the, the the council it will be a joyful celebration of uh, the in problems paradise. which have been overcome <laughs> maybe in paradise but it's not the best not the right. the, the worst way of celebrating absolutely yeah. absolutely Barbara, you mentioned that the Orthodox Church suffers a sort of uh, an opposite problem mm -hmm. uh, namely that uh, finding uh, someone in the church who would have a sort of leading role. There mm -hmm. are a few pretenders, but it's not uh, really um, expressed in reality. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, the problem that we, we don't have this council already happened, perhaps mm -hmm. uh, suffers from this difficulty that mm -hmm. there is no one who can summon it and say it will take place in, in two years time. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we have to do to, to find a solution for that? Maybe, again, first of all, realize the problem. Right. So when I teach the students of the first year about the Orthodox tradition, right. I always say, look, if we accept this pentarchy, you can easily see that there is only one patriarch in the West and four in the East and one emperor in the East. So it's... Uh, by the historical development yeah. that the emperor became the representative of unity while there was a plurality of, yeah. of, of patriarchs, of church right. uh, seats. Right. So in this sense, and you see immediately that, the, that also for the Western uh, patriarch it was important to have as a partner an emperor. Right. So in this sense I do not think that the reference to the emperor is an extra theological argument or element, yeah. but it is an important element. It is not theocratic uh, uh, yeah. way of interpret 
pre interpreting. But it is also a relation with this sacramental view of the church, who realizes that if we are waiting for and preparing the, the kingdom of God, yes. and if the, the creation as such is able to realize this kingdom of God, yeah. every kind of uh, of, uh, of king or emperor or democratic government, yeah. it, we should be able as Christians to see in it the possibility, the capacity, the, the creational capaci capacity to realize and to prepare this kingdom. So in this sense, if I speak about the emperor as a sign of unity, right. I do not do it in a, in a negative way. I, I realize that. that when uh, you mentioned, for instance, the Catholic Church, yeah. uh, we do have this emperor in, in a way there, but because the Pope can summon a, a council, like, like it happened yeah. in 1959, the Pope came, was elected, and he said there will be a council, and it yeah. took place. Yeah, exactly. uh, but uh, in the Orthodox Church, who do you think can ever have such this influence? Actually, I see the problem that if the Patriarch of Constantinople right. tries to be the Orthodox Pope, yeah. there will be no possibility to create unity. <laughs> Uh, it's just an observation. I right, do not right, right. No, it's well, not, no, no claim. Not it's a, a, a theological right. interpretation. <laughs> so, in in this sense, I really I see a difficulty, which you yes. have to admit.